Bye, everybody. Nice to see you. Now I'm all I'm trying to print it, but now this is coming up on you. You know, forget no, it. I'm on the mute no, no, now. Printing. <laughs> so why doesn't everybody mute right. now? Connie and Duncan? Yeah. You can right. mute right now. Double click. On this Labor Day weekend, we enter this gathering of rest and renewal. May rough, worn hands and aching backs find comfort. We enter this gathering of hope for equality. May those who are too often invisible know justice. We enter this gathering of passion and vocation. May our bonds of solidarity be strengthened. We enter this gathering of courage and friendship. May we proceed hand in hand toward freedom. Good morning. Welcome to United Church of Christ in Boxborough. I'm Reverend Cindy Worthington Berry, and no matter who you are or where you are on the journey, you are welcome here. Whether you are with us in person or online, live or later, we are so glad to be connected. For more information about life at UCC Boxborough, I invite you to visit our website where you can also sign up for The Flash, our weekly email newsletter. And if you are with us for the first time today, welcome. We are an open and affirming congregation, fully welcoming people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. We have Zoom Deacon Nancy hosting folks on, on Zoom this morning. Good morning, Nancy, and everybody on Zoom and Facebook Live. You can chat with Nancy there on Zoom. She will post a link to the digital bulletin. Uh, which you'll need for hymn lyrics, and you can also post your joys and concerns there when we get to that part of worship. Next week is Rally Day. You are invited in person and online to wear a t-shirt that reflects some aspect of your summer, um, and you're also invited to bring or have a rock with you. It might be a rock from some place in your travels this summer or just a rock you pick up on your way uh, to church in the morning. And again, in person or online. And if you're online and you have a rock, if you also are able to have a marker with you, that would be great. We are gonna have next year our beginning of the year blessings. So again, in person and online, have your backpacks and your purses and your briefcases and your devices, and we will bless them all. 
And for those in person, there will be ice cream to follow. Those at home, I trust you can find something in your freezer. Today, we are celebrating the sacrament of communion. And so again, folks online, I invite you to grab a bit of food and drink and those in person. Hopefully you have a cup with a cracker in it and grape juice will be served to you when we get to that part of worship. And on this Labor Day weekend, we gather together remembering that the first and most constant commandment is rest, to take the Sabbath, to be present to the divine spirit of God. And so we breathe in welcoming God's spirit into this place, knowing that in this place and time, God meets us here, meets us here with love. And so I invite you to listen to the sound of the bell fading away, and as it does, truly settle yourself into this time. Morning. Good morning. Well, what a beautiful morning it is. I am Jenny, and would you please join me in the call to worship? Your response is God is with us. When we're lost in the valley, God is with us. When the night seems endless, God is with us. When enemies surround us, God is with us. All the days of our life, God is with us. we worship to remember, God is with us. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is, Come and Find the Quiet Center. You are welcome to rise in body or in spirit. The words are found in your bulletin. begin our centering prayer this morning with a little bit of silence. As we prepare to share the sacrament of communion together, this silence gives us a chance to prepare our hearts. Let us pray.
God, we come to this banquet, this banquet of community, of music, of silence, of prayer. Feed us, bodies and souls, with the bread that strengthens us for life struggles, with the cup that overflows to bring justice to the world. We come seeking you, God of love, and find you ready for us, waiting for us, welcoming us here. Amen. In a world so full of conflict, it is healing for us to come together, creating true sanctuary. We revel our hopes for peace, our need for peace, as we say to each other, God's peace be with you. Folks online, you are welcome to greet each other in the chat box. In the sanctuary, we'll share a physically distanced peace then joining together in our song of celebration, a new but familiar selection for the month of September. Okay. I actually, I have it. Are you set now? Wait a minute, but keep it. Why don't you just use this one because it's all right order stapled together. Okay. Can you read this well enough? Summer, Reverend Cindy has been focusing on the Psalms. We finished that series today with a very familiar passage, Psalm 23. These verses, office shared at funerals, are also some of the first that people memorize. If you know these words by heart, you are welcome to say them with me in whatever version you know. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You obtain you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. These are sacred songs. May we sing them with our lives. Children of all ages are invited to lean in for a word for all ages. We're going to do a group project today. Yes, the school year has begun, so we're going to get ourselves all ready to join in together on all the fun activities that the year ahead will bring. How many of you are familiar with Mad Libs? All right, we got lots of hands going up. So this is when you like uh, crowdsource words to complete a story. We've done it before with prayers. Today we're gonna uh, do it to create worship together. Folks online, we need you too. Ralph is gonna help me 
So I'm going to say what I'm looking for, what kind of word. And I know usually it's like noun, adjective, verb. I'm going to get a little more specific in this one. Um, but so folks online, you can also add it to the chat. And I will occasionally be asking Ralph to give me a version from online. So don't let him down. Help Ralph out this morning. Ready? <laughs> Ready? <laughs> He's like, it's a little early for mad limbs. Okay. All right. So I need... Uh, something that frightens you. Yell one out. Crocodiles. Crocodiles. I only need, hang, well, you guys have a lot of things that fright, frighten you. Crocodiles. Something you need. Love. Going with love. <laughs> something you struggle with. <laughs> a person or thing that gives you wisdom. And I have another answer. <laughs> Say, what? <laughs> I am going to go with Google. Uh, this is going to be for the chat box, a behavior you'd like to avoid. Overeating. An activity and place you love. Beach, and like what at the beach? Swimming at the beach or walking the beach? What, what? Building sand castles. A life goal. Cricket. Peace. An aspect of yourself you'd like to increase. Activity. Ralph, do you have one online? Because I need two for this one. Help? Is that right? Or help? Help. Got it. You guys are doing great. Something positive, a, a positive thing. Ice cream. Ralph, do you have one online? I'm going to go with music. Something that someone does that helps you. Oh, listen. I'm going to go with listen. I'm going to go with listen. Funny, I no longer remember what these words stand for, so God only knows what I just came up with. Okay, a place or event for gathering. Church. A group or type of person you struggle with. <laughs> Very brave. Uh, okay, something, another, I need one more thing, something that someone does to help you. <laughs> Can I say do the dishes? We're almost done. Okay. Oh my God, more positive things. Something positive. Bam. I feel like that was a rebuttal. <laughs> I need one more positive thing. Sunshine. Nice. And then a place that is positive. This is the last one. Oh, wait, so somebody on Zoom, a place that is positive. Freebie market. Okay. You have just rewritten the 23rd Psalm. Ready? Deep breath. Oh God, you are my Google. I shall not overeat. You make me build sand castles at the beach. You lead me to peace. You restore love. You lead me in activity and health for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of money, I will fear no crocodiles. For you are with me. Your ice cream and your music, they listen to me. You prepare a church before me in the presence of family. 
You do the dishes, my cup runs over. Surely, family and sunshine will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in your freebie market forever. Amen. Um, the Mad Lib idea for Psalm 23 came from poet Christy Towers. She is actually from Somerville, Mass, uh, but I learned about her at a national program um, just recently. She made a computer program that gives you a completely new version of the 23rd Psalm every time you refresh or every time you hit the link that takes you to her site. Um, I'm going to hit the link now. And we'll see what we get. Later on, um, Zoom Deacon will post the link in the chat. So you will uh, have a chance, those of you online, to, to do it from home. Okay, here's what, what just came up when I hit the link. Oh God, you are my compass. I shall not have what is not mine. You make me find friendship with my God. You lead me to community gardens. You restore my vitality. You lead me to be more like you for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through terrible thoughts that keep me awake at night, I will fear no emptiness, for you are with me. Your wisdom and kind heart snuggle me. You prepare a roller rink before me in the presence of my nemesis. I'm not sure I said that right, nemesis. You baptize me, my cup runs over. Surely justice and happiness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in your oasis forever. Amen. So Psalm 23 is so familiar to many of us. Who, who has it at least partially memorized in the room? Yeah, lots of hands in the room, and I, I, bet, online, I bet online too. I think that's why I love alternative versions of this psalm so much because I can still recognize the original psalm with its peaceful, comforting imagery, but then if there's a new interpretation, it makes me see it in a, at a deeper level. So I've got another one that was written by Reverend Michelle Turrigian as a reflection for mental health awareness. This is, this is what she writes. You are my healer. In you, I find everything. You sit with me on sofas as I cry with a counselor. You lead me to friendships still and steadfast. These connections restore my mind and soul. You calm my spirit as it panics on paths of all sorts. And when I find my mind in the shadows of life, I will expect your life, for you are with me. Medications and therapy are your tools for me. You prepare a meditation for me in the presence of my fears, and someday soon my soul will once again overflow with joy. Surely. You will accompany me all the days of my life, and I will dwell with your spirit, your deepest breath, forever. As Ginny mentioned, many of us are familiar with Psalm 23 from funerals, and I love, another reason why I love these variations is because they make clear that this psalm isn't written about death. It's written about life, about all the aspects of life. It's actually kind of a contemporary American thing to use this psalm as funerals. That's not a long-standing practice, and it's not found uh, in, in Christian tradition around the world. This psalm is about all of life, the joys and the challenges and everything in between, and reminding us that God is there with us, all of it. But like I said, there's a lot about life in here, but I'm just going to focus on, on three things this morning. So the first is rest. First and foremost, obviously, this is a psalm about rest, which makes a lot of sense for Labor Day weekend. God knows, God knows, because God commanded it, that we need rest. In this society that's so focused on what we can contribute and what we can produce and that glorifies so much of our busyness, we need 
rest. Rest for our tired bodies, rest for our stressed out minds, rest for our disconnected spirits. But needing rest, getting rest, are two different things. Sheep, Tom has a lot about sheep in it, a sheep can't rest if they are hungry or thirsty because they're going to be focused on finding food and water. And a sheep can't rest if they're worried about predators creeping up on them. We're not much different. The psalmist says that God is like a shepherd, making sure that we have what we need so we can truly, deeply rest if we're just willing to lay down for a while. Remember, the Psalms are from the Hebrew scripture. These are, this is the poetry of our Jewish siblings. What's the story that's the defining story? There's lots of stories for our Jewish siblings, but what's the story that's their defining story? It's a movie. Exodus. Exodus is the defining story of the Hebrew people being in slavery under Pharaoh in Egypt, and then God getting them free. Oh, 40 years but God got them free from slavery. And when you are enslaved, there's lots of things you have no control over. You don't have control over what you eat, what you do, what happens to your family, and you certainly don't have any control over when you rest. The person who is over you tells you when you can take a break. They tell you when and where you can sleep, and you are at their mercy. At any moment, they might rise you up and, and get you going again. The Hebrew people were so good at the tasks that their Egyptian overseers gave them that they could have gotten off work early. But instead, the overseers, those who were enslaving them, saw how good they were doing work and so gave them more work rather than time off. So as people who remembered slavery, even if they hadn't individually been there, as a people, they remembered slavery. They knew how powerful it is to rest and to not have somebody else telling you when you could rest. To be able to say, I'm going to rest because my body needs it. I'm going to rest because it gives me time with the people I care about. I'm going to rest because that gives me time and space with God. So when the psalmist is talking about God giving us rest, it's the reminder that God brought the people out of slavery. Rest then is a liberative, revolutionary act, and it still is today. So the second thing I want to talk about in here is uh, the table. The psalm says, God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And of course, on a, a communion Sunday, it's particularly relevant to have a psalm that talks about a table. Obviously, a Hebrew psalm wasn't talking about Christian communion. Nonetheless, the table is a symbol across all kinds of religions and traditions. In the psalm, uh, the psalmist talks about a table that God has prepared with oil for a blessing and a cup that's overflowing. A table that is a sanctuary, a shelter, a safe space, even in the midst of people and things that might hurt us. God gives us bread for the journey to sustain us no matter what might come at that table where it is safe enough to eat. Only makes me think of middle school and high school. Those cafeteria tables, can anybody on the back part of that room relate to that? Maybe on the side over there, you know, where you, yeah, Todd can relate. <laughs> You know, where, again, maybe it was just me, but walking into that cafeteria, which really looks like it looks like it's just a bunch of tables and, you know, rolls and gravy and rice and things like that and people, but it's not. It's like a minefield. And you don't know what's going to happen depending on where you go and what looks from who, mean what, and where it's safe to go. And it just feels treacherous. And in the middle of that, in approximately 19 minutes, you're supposed to eat the meal that's going to sustain you for the rest of the day. In a place of like turmoil, sure, 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 relax, eat, rest, right? So we need this psalm, uh, you know, for all of our middle schoolers and high schoolers, uh, and maybe some break rooms and work cafeterias too, that God is with you at those treacherous tables. 
God is with you in those places that just don't feel safe. God is going to help you through it. Maybe God can't fix everything that goes on in a high school cafeteria, but God is there beside you, reminding you, you are not alone. And then may there be, after school, before school, may there be safe tables where you can gather, like the one that we will gather at this morning, where God is the host where God's rules apply, where there is room for all, and it is safe for all to eat. But of course, God isn't with us just at the tables. The psalm proclaims that God is with us no matter what. Comforting, protective force, no matter what. God's presence isn't like and an Eagle Scout award, you know, the, the highest award in, in, in Boy Scouting or the Gold Award, the highest award in Girl Scouting. You know, you don't have to do a bunch of holiness badges in order to earn God with you. And, and God, God isn't like grad school admission where you have to earn a, a sort of moral GPA to prove that you deserve God's presence. I know that is really hard for us to believe. Or maybe it's just me. Is it, is it hard for anybody else to believe that God... Have you ever had the situation that your friend gets mad if you don't text back quickly enough? You don't call, you don't say the right thing. Yeah? Have you ever had the experience that, uh, you know, if, if you don't, you don't, you don't want to go to the gym until you lose 10 pounds, right? Which makes a lot of sense. But you're like, I'm, I can't go to the gym like this. I can't, I, or I can't afford those leggings that you have to have to wear to the gym. So I can't, I can't qualify for the gym yet. Uh, and, and these days, if we, if we do our job in the hours we're supposed to, it's labeled quiet quitting. Like all the messages and pressure from the rest of the world is we are not enough. Hardly ever. Our faith proclamation is that God is with us no matter what. And that makes no sense in a world like this. And I think that's part of why we gather week after week to remind each other that God loves you just as you are, no matter what. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. God's just there with you, has been since the beginning, and will be at the end. I said this is a psalm about life, not death, but it is still a beautiful psalm for reflecting on at the end of our lives or at the end of the life of someone. After all, that's one of the times we need the most comfort, the most reassurance of God's presence. So author uh, James Taylor, not the singer, but the theologian and poet, he's written interpretations of many Psalms, including the 23rd. Uh, and one of his versions of Psalm 23 is called Looking Back on a Full Life. Sounds like it could have been written for somebody who's a bit older, reflecting on a long and full life. So we're going to have these words as our closing today. I invite you to take a deep, take a deep breath. All out. You close your eyes if you like. Hear these words. God has walked with me. I could ask nothing more. God has given me green meadows to laugh in, clear streams to think beside, untrodden paths to explore. When I thought the world rested on my shoulders, God put things into perspective. When I lashed out at an unfair world, God calmed me down. When I drifted into harmful ways, God straightened me out. God was with me all the way. I do not know what lies ahead, but I am not afraid. I know you will be with me. Even in death, I will not despair. You will comfort and support me. Though my eye dims and my mind dulls, you will continue to care about me. Your touch will soothe the tension in my temples. My fears will fade away. I am content. 
in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with me. All through life, I have found goodness in people. When life ends, I expect to be gathered into the ultimate goodness of God. Amen. the tradition of this church to celebrate communion on the first Sunday of every month. So folks on Zoom, I invite you, if you haven't already done so, to find yourself a bit of food and drink. Here in the sanctuary, we are having gluten-free crackers and grape juice. At home, you might have coffee and a muffin or, or water and a bit of last night's leftover pizza. Remember that when we celebrate communion, we are remembering the last supper that Jesus shared with his friends. For that supper, he didn't order something special. He used what was at hand, right? Right, what was there to invite his friends to remember him always. As a faith community, we know the power of connecting our hearts with God's presence. So during this time, we share our joys and concerns in prayer. For those of you joining through Zoom video or Facebook Live, we invite you to share your joys and concerns in the chat box. Folks in the room, you'll be invited to share yours aloud. Just a reminder that in both cases, out of respect for confidentiality, we don't use last days. We begin with our joys. What joys do you bring to this place today? Nancy. Nancy's great nephew was born in July. Jason Parker, did I get that right? Great, great. Great, great. Yeah. There's just so many great. Yeah. And everybody's doing well? I can get more. Paul. Yesterday, the Worthington Berry family moved there last child into his first apartment. Um, well, it's the oldest, it doesn't matter. We now have, it's just us now. It's just me and Paul. It's, it's just us. It's a joy, allegedly. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fine, right? It's gonna be fine. Okay, yeah, okay. And I heard yesterday's freebie and Anne is confirming it went very well. Huge gratitude. If, you, uh, if you're not local, if you've never been to Freebie, we got to get some more photos out there, but you can see them at some in the newsletter. The team who works on this continuously adapt to provide food to those who need it and keep food out of the waste stream. What an amazing community event. Huge thanks to those who keep adapting to figure it out. Congratulations, so you, you've gotten a seat in the symphony. And what do you play? Congratulations on uh, getting a seat in the symphony and, uh, you know, blow your heart out. Yeah. Other, jo other joys this morning. I've got a couple. Um, we have a new community services coordinator in Boxborough. I'm very excited. It happens to be Wendy, who's a member of UCC Boxborough, which is awesome. It's also Wendy's birthday today, so lots of joy for Wendy. And in the same family, Damon got his first job at Whole Foods. He's starting this week and he gets a discount. So we will all be giving Damon our Whole Foods shopping list. 
What concerns do you bring to this place today? Why, well, I have a couple. So, folks, especially who go to summer worship, know Judy M. This is, Judy's married to Don. Judy is the mom of Mike, who plays the clarinet here. Judy's husband, Don, died this past week. He had a massive stroke, uh, was on life support. The family was able to be with him, tell him what was happening, and be with him as uh, he let go and went from this life to the next. This is, as you can imagine, like just shocking and hard for the family, uh, in, not just for Judy, but for Mike and, their, and Judy's son, Joe, as well. Those of you who know that South Acton is without a pastor right now, know that I will be their pastor. Judy and I have already connected, so we are gonna you know, keep Judy surrounded with um, love. If you need more information, just let me know. Also, um, Flo Bell, Flo H, who is our fellowship champ, uh, she's gonna have recovery from this back injury for a number of weeks. Doesn't particularly want cards. So you don't need to send her cards, you can just pray for her. But it also means our fellowship team has had a, a big hit. So if you have capacity to help out some Sunday with fellowship, that would be great. Meanwhile, we pray for flow. Any other concerns in the room that I've... And so we gather at the table. We come from many places, differing in age, differing in race, differing in orientation, politics, and even religion. As we come together around the table, we discover that our differences are not something that we tolerate, but that our differences are indeed a blessing. The more difference we bring, the more fully we experience the presence of the sacred in our midst. So come, children of God, just as you are. Wherever you are on this journey of life, you are welcome here, here in this place, here in this community, here at this table. Come, children of God, come and remember. We remember the stories that Jesus' friends tell, stories of bread broken and shared, feeding a multitude, stories of being gathered together, enemy and friend around tables, stories of unlikely guests revealing the face of the sacred. They say that it was on a night of both celebration and betrayal that Jesus took the bread left over on the table, blessed it and broke it, reminding them that it is in the breaking that we become whole, losing our lives that we find them, serving that we are served. As the grain becomes, as the grain scattered becomes one in the loaf, when we eat this bread, we become one with one another. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup on the table, poured out for sharing, remembering with those with whom he gathered the life-giving breath, even now coursing through our own veins, the breath of life from whence we come, the breath that precedes and follows all that we can see. As the grape finds life in the vine, when we drink this cup, we become one with the source of life itself. On this Labor Day weekend, perhaps we are more aware than usual uh, of all the workers who have given of their very selves that we might share this meal. In the bread we eat, we honor farmers and bakers, we honor truck drivers and those who stock grocery shelves. In the cup we drink, we honor those who pick fruit, those who are often endangered by pesticides, and those who work in bottling plants and the cashier at the store standing long hours on tired feet. In bread and cup, we honor those who work so hard just to put food on their own tables, we remember those from whom there has never been enough. May they join us here now around this table. And so in this sanctuary and in your kitchens and living rooms, I invite you to raise your hands in blessing on the food and drink we have gathered before us and the long line of God's children who helped bring it here. Let us pray. Holy One, this is the sacrament we share because others have passed it on spiritually and physically each of us. We pray that your spirit of life and love, of tenderness and power, rest upon every bread and every cup, so that they may feed our inmost needs, and pour forth a grace that can change the world. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. And hear us as we pray together the words you taught us. Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sharing the bread, reminder of God's presence, we become the hands and feet of God. Let us eat together. Sharing the cup, a sign of God's love, we are strengthened in our relationship with God. Let us drink together. Please join me in a prayer of gratitude for this feast of blessing. Thank you, God, for our hands, stronger now to touch, reach, hold, serve. Thank you, God, for our eyes, clearly focused now to see deep needs and gifts in all our brothers and sisters and siblings. Thank you, God, for our tongues, free now to speak your praise in love and joy. Thank you, God, for our ears, tuned now to the cries in our world for bread and justice. Thank you, God, for our feet, running now with you. Amen. spent um, two weeks in August reading, drafting schedules for the year ahead, and connecting with several colleagues to discuss ideas and strategies, especially as we continue to deal with the pandemic's impact on the local church. I am so grateful for that time of preparation work. It hasn't really been possible the last two summers as we've been constantly adjusting and figuring things out. I'm so grateful to have had the time this year, uh, as well as the funds to buy books and attend webinars that would help me in all this preparatory work. And it is your gifts and pledges that make it possible for me to step back like that and try to be a little bit creative and strategic for the year ahead. We'll see how it goes. But thank you for valuing that time and for supporting it so generously. Thank you for all you do to keep this church's ministry strong in the world. The Zoom Deacon will post giving information in the chat box, and there are offering plates at the back of the sanctuary. Our closing hymn is Amazing Grace. The words are printed in the bulletin. You're welcome to rise in body or in spirit as we sing together. May be seated. Our discussion question for you today, online and in person, or for your own journaling, is very simple. What is your favorite phrase of Psalm 23? 
And there's a fellowship for those in person, and the Zoom Deacon will have breakout rooms, or, or uh, if there's just a small group, an opportunity for those online to chat together. Beloved, all hands together to hold the wounded. All hands together to make the bread. All hands together to work for freedom. All hands together to change the world. Go in peace. Thank you.